Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. Inshallah, this season we'll also be looking at different other maraja and their verdicts on similar topics. I'm your host, the most inshallah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, in Muharram, we asked, I mean, I asked last episode in regards to uh, Sheikh Wahid and music. Being accompanied by, um, you know, Latmiyat and Matam. What about the drums? Now you mentioned that you have these drums that they use uh, during Muharram time, during Latam, and these are like you know war drums. According to uh, Ayatollah Sayyid Khoi, Rahmatullah what is the actual official fatwa and verdict on using drums uh, during Azza? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم um, with regard to the fatwa of Allah Khoi in using the drums he says that um, the drums used in the مواكب of the عزاء they are not part of the uh, 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 the music instruments, and they are fine. I mean, you know, as, as we've seen, the, the ones we see, we see them in Karbala, for example, in the streets, in other places, in Iran, for example, which are the normal drums, the dammam, as they call it, which are fine in terms of, of, of using these uh, as they call them, war drums. Uh, unless, he says that, unless there are other muharramat, associated with this type of aza, then that becomes haram. Otherwise, just the drums it should be fine. Uh, there's no issue with it. Um, Ayatollah Shirazi would say that um, the well-known tools which are used in the Muharram aza or the aza dari in Muharram and Safar, the Husseini aza, such as the, the drums and such like, the war drums, they are allowed to be used, the Jews, as the Sayyid mentions, in the Husseini Aza. So, yes, you can use them, that's fine, there's no issue with it. There's also, we have all these drums, but there's also the trumpet as well, isn't there? And sometimes there's like a, a cymbal or something that they exactly. use as well. There's, there's quite, there's more than one. But these, yes, indeed, these are um, um, war tools in which they used to use them in the old days uh, in order to um, announce and declare war against the other mm -hmm. side, for example, or to warn the others that we are ready for uh, the war, for example. So, other than these tools, which are, as they say, alatullahu, the music instruments, they cannot be used at all, in anyhow. Ahsant. Thank you, Sheikhna. Sheikhna, we were talking about backbiting, and you know, we mentioned something very interesting last time was that if someone is there to reconcile between two parties, if he's doing sulh, then it is permissible for them to listen to the backbiting because they're trying to make peace. Now, extending on from that, what do we do in regards to certain professionals? Lawyers, psychiatrists, doctors. Some of these people have to sit and listen to an individual and write reports and take down notes. Sometimes the individual will discuss private matters and secrets which you know should have been you know well kept a secret kept in private but for the purpose of you know trying to improve themselves or trying to you know get somewhere they have to discuss these and these are also written down these notes are written down so in that situation the person who is the professional listening to the client is he listening to Ghiba? He or she is. The, are they listening to Ghiba? And the fact that they're writing it down as well, does this constitute as a sin? You see, um, those individuals should be in a position that they are under the, um, the instructions of the Islamic teachings. So, in, in, in somehow, they have to be, as mentioned previously, those who try to reconcile and bring sulh between 
the other parties. Um, in this case, they can actually listen because they are trying to solve, uh, solve um, an awkward and complex situation between two parties uh, and to bring them together again and to solve the issue. Um, otherwise, the state says if it's um, the one who openly commits various sins, and that's a different issue. The one who is openly drinks, let's say, openly listens to music, then there's no riba on this individual. When you mention that, you know, this individual, let's say, uh, as I've said, with regard to nahi al munkar, forbidding evil, that you mention this, this individual is causing corruption. He's actually causing uh, deviation to others. You know, he's joining others with him to drink na'udhu billah or to listen to songs and so forth. That is outside the uh, boundary of riba. And that's it, basically known as nahi al-munkar, forbidding evil. Awesome. Sheikh, let's move our conversation on to like more, you know, social and family matters. Um, when it comes to clothing, um, Sometimes we have clothes which are worn both by male and females. Now, if you look at trousers and jackets, traditionally it was worn by men. Uh, in today's you know, day and age, both men and women wear uh, you know, trousers and, and two-piece suits and jackets. Is that Islamically acceptable for you know, men and women to wear one another's clothes, which are, you could say, prescribed for one another? There is no objection. Uh, with this regard that, you know, uh, the, let's say women wearing men's, let's say, similar clothing, you know, trousers, for example, as we see today, that now we have uh, jeans trousers for ladies, um, jackets, for example, suits, for example. <coughs> However, this should be all under the hijab for the woman if she wants to go out in the street. She cannot wear a suit or trousers and just walk out in the street because that actually can show and expose the body shape and body, the body curve as well, which is haram. So she must conceal that under her wide garment or abaya or whatever, chador, to avoid showing this type of clothing. And... Um, with regard to men, of course, there is no issue in to if, if it's not really uh, like the, 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 the clothes of the woman. Tashabbuh, there's no tashabbuh liking the clothes of the woman. It's just a normal, I mean, as I've mentioned before the uh, episode, that um, in some countries, uh, Muslim countries, they wear some kind, some kind of similar to the skirts. But it's, yeah. not, it's not a skirt, it's, something, it's a, not uh, really an issue. What's it called in English? I think it's called a sarong in English. Mm. You're talking about a big cloth which they, they wrap around exactly. the waist. Yeah, oh, like yeah. the ihram? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the ihram? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the bottom part of the ihram. Yes. It's similar to a skirt, for example, a long mm -hmm. skirt. Yeah. So that should be fine, there's no issue with it. But as I've said, for the, for the ladies, they have to make sure that they don't show this type of clothing in the front of non mahram. Uh, men in the street, so they have to conceal it and, and to cover it. This is Salah. Now, is it permissible for one individual to wear clothing, garments, which khums is actually applied on? So, let's say I've got this jacket, I haven't paid khums on it yet, I have to pay khums on it. Can I wear this jacket in my Salah, or do I have to pay the khums first before I can wear this? It is not permissible for the individual to wear the clothing in which he or she have not paid the khums for. And there's the liability of khums on these uh, garments. You must pay first the khums for these garments and clothing, then you can pray with them. Otherwise, they're considered to be usurped, ghasub. And unless the one wants to delay his payments, pay installments, I don't know, whatever is the reason, but by all that means, the individual needs to ask permission from the marja, the hakim al that I want to use these before I pay the khumus. Because of this one, two, three, he explains the situation to the, to, the, to the representative, the wakil, or the marja himself. When he gets the permission, then that's, that's fine. You can wear them and pay the khumus afterwards. Shana, what about silk? Is it permissible for uh, both men and women to wear silk 
And what about, you know, like silk handkerchiefs or silk tie? Is that acceptable? Wearing silk for the woman is allowed, it's permissible. However, it's haram for the men to wear silk, similar to the gold, mm -hmm. that they can't wear gold. Um, the silk is haram for them to wear, unless if it's artificial silk, that's fine. You don't call that silk anymore, it's artificial. Um, with regard to handkerchief, yes, if you have just a small handkerchief in, inside your pocket, that's fine, even if it's uh, made from pure silk. But let's say you want to buy uh, underwear silk. In this case, it is also haram. You can't wear them. Um, anything that you can wear them, you can't uh, uh, wear them because they are silk. Uh, in this case, it becomes haram. So small particles like hand handkerchief should be fine. Sheikhna, you mentioned gold. Um, so is it not permissible for uh, men and women to wear gold jewellery? Or is it just the men that are not allowed to wear it? For the women, it is encouraged for them to wear gold, of course. Okay. It's part of the ornament of the uh, women to, to wear them, especially those who are married, to show this ornament to their uh, husbands. Um, with regard to men, no, it's haram. It's not allowed for a man to wear a gold ring, as we see in some individuals who wear gold rings, or even it's, a, it's a, like a wedding ring. Um, no, it's not allowed. Unless it's that platinum or other metals or silver, which is fine, there's no issue with it. Or it's like a fake gold, for example. But the genuine gold, men cannot wear at all. Thank you very much, Sheikh Lan. Thank you to all our viewers. If you'd like to send in a question to our show, it is at ahqam, SOS at Imam Hussein 3.tv. And inshallah, we'll be seeing you on the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, 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 ah.